party started. What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Brady Botner. What's up? We are going to be showing off some tabletop sword and shield decks here today, and I have got my beautiful, beautiful Frostmoth <laughs> deck with me. And Brady, what do you got? I've got uh, Baby Blacephalon. Baby Blacephalon. So, uh, Baby Blacephalon really hyped uh, in this upcoming set. It just won the Bakum Regional Championships, and now gets Lucky Egg. It does. Which allows you to fill your hand to seven cards when a card wearing Lucky Egg gets knocked out. It's kind of exactly what the doctor ordered for this deck, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, a deck that was already winning regional championships. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're going to see if uh, Towering Splash and Volcanium Prism Star is enough to take on this baby Lecephalon deck. And uh, make sure to check out FulgerGames.com. Sword and Shield pre-orders are going up today. That means if you're watching on YouTube that they are up right now. So make sure to check out the website and support the store. Also, make sure to check out FullGripCodes.com for all your Sword and Shield uh, codes pre-ordered so that they can be delivered to you via email before the set drops on PTCGO. Now, I also talked to JW, so we got JW is going to be coming down uh, the first week of February for some games. I'm really excited to see what he kind of picks up with on the tabletop as well. And uh, yeah, we're going to get uh, we're going to get cooking, Brady. Let's talk. I mean, maybe we can talk tonight about uh, you know some decks that we're going to bring in for, sure. for some spicy spice <laughs> tomorrow. And I see some talk in the chat about Ohio. Yes, it's never been a better time to move to Akron, Ohio. I mean, amazing place for the Pokemon trading card game, I have for to sure. say. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't you agree it's Buster Brady? Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be one of the be best places in the world to play Pokemon cards, sure. just have to say. Plus, full, full group games is here. So, hey, I see you, Baker. Take that back. All right, would you like heads or tails? Uh, heads. No. All right, we got another one. Still heads? Yeah. All right. Tails it is, and I will choose to go first. Cool. Yep. Now, with the Baby Cephalon deck, would you have, choose, would you have yes. chosen to go? Yeah, <laughs> I would have gone, gone second. Yeah, yeah you would have gone second. <laughs> um, I guess, like, I have no real way of... Let's see, if you go first... Yeah, I mean, like, I don't really have any way of punishing you, I don't think. Even if you choose to go first. Uh, or if you, you do go first, because I can't really, like, knock you out. Yeah, so... I can do 80 damage, turn one with a Caldeo. Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, Brady and I did play, yep, you're good, did play a matchup with this where I played against his Lepario Melmetal Power Plants deck, and that that was ugly. Um, <laughs> that was really tough. Uh, I mean, the Power Plants were absolutely devastating. It's going to be very refreshing to play this deck against a tech that does not have multiple power plants and Marnie in it. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, you will be doing very little to disrupt my hand. I do love that. Now, have you ever run into like a weird situation with the Blacephalon deck where you like run out of attackers or anything like that? Um, not necessarily like running out of attackers, but like, I mean, you get benched pretty often because it's like hard to find the other guys. Right. And that's like, uh, yep, you're good. It's like with only six basics, I mean, if you like prize one, you six basics, you yeah. prize two. I mean, yeah, you right. Prize two, maybe yeah. you prize three, and then you're probably yeah, just you, losing the yeah, game. Yeah, you probably just lose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. you really have to you know, hit the host, you know, hit that basic. Especially right. since usually the first blue one just gets knocked out. Right. Right. And especially against a deck that plays like Chaotic Swell. Yeah. So then your off space just goes away, and you can't find another blue one with it. For sure. Now, are you thinking that? Uh, is there like a, a Lily's Polka Doll on your deck? No. No? I think I saw that. Uh, did Stefan play one? He did not, but Jesse was playing one. Jesse was playing one. Okay, got it. Um, now, what do you think about the idea of using a Lily's Polka Doll in the Stefan deck? Um, I'm not super into it. Okay, cool. Uh, and why is it's that? It's not in the Greens version. I liked it in the Pidgeotto version because you kind of were just you know, hanging out and building up a hand with the Pidgeotto. Right. Because um, you're like Elming on your first couple turns, ideally. Um, this version, I don't know. I think it's just more aggressive and like you don't really need the doll. Right. Which uh, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, if you're a lot more likely to take like a big knockout on the second turn of the game with this deck than you are with the Pidgeotto version. Right. At the League Challenge, I did not see, uh, I didn't see Jesse ever use the doll. Really? Uh, yeah, I saw him like bench it a couple times, but. To... Just to thin his hand. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Never actually. Wow. Four <laughs> mulligans. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> My Frostmouth deck. It loves this. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> More cards in the opening hand. Yes. Uh, I'm into it. 
That sounds great. Now, what do you think? Um, what do you think will end up being the, uh, I guess the uh, consensus with Frostmoth? What do you What do you think? I mean, I I obviously I'm bought in. I think I think that the deck is going to be a tier one deck. What do you think? I do not think it's particularly good at all. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. All right, compare it to something. Compare it to something in the. Uh, in the past, do you think it's like dark I don't box think levels? I don't think it's, it's like significantly better than Nag Quag was. Oh, <laughs> comparing it to Nag Quag. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'd say right, it's right. a little better. <laughs> Slightly better than Nag Quag. Yeah. We would say then you think it's worse than Dark Box. No, not Dark Box is definitely worse than Nag Quag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Dark Box, like top 32 worlds though. Top sixteen. <laughs> top sixteen. I mean, Dark Box top sixteen worlds. Yeah, but that was the only time it <laughs> got to finish it any yeah. tournament. Make sure, Do make sure Dark Box Tyler doesn't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Hear you uh, spilling that haterade all over the table, bro. <laughs> um, so interesting. I think it's not. All right, well, uh, we're gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna have to see. Uh, I did think about like a guess in the frost. I'm gonna take my five mulligans, my man. Enjoy. All right. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> three, four, five. Okay. okay. Good luck and also have fun. Thank you. And I have a draw for turn. Wonderful. So, thinking here that you know you do play custom catchers, it is possible for you to take a knockout theoretically on the first turn of the game. Correct. Um, let's just go quick ball into you know a water into the discard pile. We can get ourselves a snom, and then the rest of this hand is looking pretty good. I'm gonna see if like the magic arm whale lords in my deck. Oh, he is. Okay, so I decided that it's got to be Magikarp Wailord for first, and then Sonic Blast. That's the way it's got to be, I believe. Um, I don't know why. No, I do know why. Because you don't want to actually knock out the active. You want to, like, clear the bench. Ah, so, like, sure. yes. You that want... Uh, yeah, because Magikarp Wailord will only do 20 of the active. And yeah, yeah, and then, and then he that wants to... Yeah, I think that that's the way you want to go Sure. Uh, with it. Potentially to give yourself the highest chance of being able to win. So I've got that search there, and then I can go um, Pokemon Communication, but I don't necessarily think that I want to. I do want to desperately get the Volcanion Prism Star out of the active, so I could Pokemon Communication this turn, but there's no guarantee that I'm going to hit the Moth next turn if I do. And if you go turn one, knock out my Volcanion Prism Star, like I am just the sickest <laughs> so i think that i am oh, we gotta have a little faith right <laughs> um, i think that i'm gonna use pokemon communication sure. and uh we're going to trade the denny mm -hmm. into the deck and go get ourselves the dawn wings sure and then we are going to attach the that's there, and we're going to go here, and then I believe that I'm just going to Invasion and Retreat into Caldeo. Mm -hmm. It's like if I'm going to lose a two-prizer, it's better to be him than the Dawnwings, to be honest. Sure. Um, and he actually takes five energy to knock out, so it's like slightly better. Yeah. And then we will pass to you. All right. Yep. Going to start off the Necrobike. Sure. Uh, I'm to water for the active. Sounds good. Okay. Um, that's fine. I will just. Sure. Ten. Okay. It's relevant ten. So that's fine. I feel like uh, we've we're just going to throw that onto the moth. So the fine target to have on it, and then Pokemon Catcher and Super Scoop Up don't particularly matter. We are going to invasion. Um. I'm wondering here, I could 
Gusting up the bench will set up an alarm, but actually I kind of want to take a knockout, so I think we just want to put pressure on. So we're just going to energy retrieval, sure. get the one energy out of the discard pile, accelerate it, and we're just going to go for the Magnolia ditching the scoop up and the Cynthia and all of that. So discard draw seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we do have Pokemon communication and a Snom, so we are going to be able to get that beautiful Moth into play. Mothra. There she is. Now the, uh, the pre-release art for the Moth is so cool. Really dig it. If anybody has seen the pre-release promos, uh, it is very, very nice artwork. So definitely into that. And then uh, let's see. I think knocking out the active still seems ideal. So we can just go energy here. And then quick ball. I mean, yeah, getting, I guess I kind of have to, no, I don't have to put a Snob into play necessarily. But I will get the Magikarp Waylord and just keep it in my hand, I think, just in case you do take a knockout on my Caldeo. Uh, the Magikarp Wailer may be who we pivot into next turn because I can't afford to. Oh uh, well, you know, can't afford to give up too many prizes. I mean, we need to give up this one. It's gonna be two, and then Magikarp Wailer is gonna be three, and then um, and then the Volcanium Pizzar is one. So we just kind of have to hope that gets there. All right, we are going to knockout with Caldea. Turn two, man. Feels like the turn two secret sword. Anybody who remembers back in the day, wow. It is actually called Secret Sword. That's crazy. It's the same attack as Caldeo EX. I was going to say, this feels exactly like... <laughs> feels exactly like... Uh, uh, I was actually thinking about that. So, Beazle Bozo in the chat right now is asking, uh, what can I buy with 50,000 tricky points? Yeah, we turned off the drawings and the kickflips in the Twitch reward system. Um, because we're doing tabletops, which are getting uploaded to YouTube, and just trying to put on a nice production during these couple of weeks. So uh, I am going to have to account for the fact that tricky points are going to be extremely inflated by the time I turn them back on, and uh, I will have to probably come up with a new uh, a new system as we know it. Uh, everybody probably have just a ton of tricky points at this point. So, all right. So you've got greens, no welder. So, no attack this turn? Correct. All right. Uh, give me some extra space. Sure. Now, that is good for me. I mean, Caldeo, if Caldeo can trade two for two, I mean, that's kind of ideal. At least it's like getting me started. I mean, you only have six attackers in the deck. Um, you know, if the Victini Prism Star gets benched, like, I mean, that just. That doesn't even need to get uh, Sauna Blasted first. Or Sauna Blasted, it just gets KO'd by Towering Splash. Right. Yep. Um, Blazing, I guess if I hit an energy, it makes it take one less. So. No, actually, I'm just going to pass. You're going to pass? Yep. All right, draw. So that's fine with me. Uh, let's see how many energy I got in the discard pile. I've got one. That's fine. And I don't necessarily think that I want to lay any other cards down. So Caldeo is just going to take this knockout. Sure. And we're going to move forward. Right. Uh, check. Sure. Okay. I'll wash space. Seems good. Grab the GX. Yep. Yeah, actually, this matchup actually um, seems pretty insane because I could just check guys are up the GX too. You can't. I mean, if I match them, right? <laughs> right. If you do match, right? I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm going to uh, B string. Sure. And we got a question in the chat. Am I playing Caldeo GX in this deck? I was. Um, actually, it was uh, in my first copy of the list, and then uh, I ended up 
I ended up cutting it for a Palkia GX. Palkia GX just seems better. How many cards are you I have six. Okay. Fire Deflect away and Energy and Reset Scan. Seems good. And uh, I am still. I, I like the the Dawn Wings. I think like the thing is is like with the with the balloon version of the deck, the balloons are just so good. I mean, they're very very good, especially if you're drawing a lot of cards. I mean, they just uh, they give the deck exactly what it wants, which is just free retreat. Now, the other way that you could build the Frostmoth deck is theoretically you could build it with like Jirachis, but if you're playing Jirachis, you're probably not playing balloons. You're probably playing skateboards, and then. So then you just need to add, also add switches into the deck because you can't play Jirachis and Escape Boards without switches. So then you also have to have room for those. So the Jirachis and the switches, they just take up a lot of real estate, a lot of space. And uh, space is not something that this deck has a ton of. Um, and, uh, you know, for reasons that I had talked about previously, I, had, I was playing like a ridiculously thick Frost Moth line before, and that's just because I wanted to like, I was doing it for the I was doing it for the gram, you feel me? Okay. I just I wanted to get like I wanted to get that turn two pop off play where like I did like turn two three hundred damage. And we got that. Um uh, but I think like I'll admit that, you know, a correct amount of frost moth is probably more like a three three. Um but I was just tired of like not popping off every single game. So I wanted to go four four just to to get that turn two pop off every single game. But I think like four three I think four three is fair because you can make the argument that you want to start with a um, you know, start with a Snom every single game, even if you're going first. So it gives you like the highest chance of being able to do that. Yeah, in this particular version of the list, um, I did end up cutting the fourth Frost Moth for the Volcanium Prism Star to just have that extra attacker. So we're going to draw. And you only have three prizes left. I have four. This is ah, that is okay. Very good. I was like, "How did that happen?" <laughs> that uh, would be sketch. <laughs> so we're thinking that is now the time. Let's see how many people. You know, two two of those guys are down. That's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. All right. So I'm thinking that we probably have to like towering splash this turn, and then we're gonna set both of these guys up. No, that doesn't actually work. Because then if you bench the Baby Blacephalon, or the Blacephalon GX, then we're just out. So, I think I might have to Sauna Blast this turn. And then, potentially, yeah, do some more stuff, like, later? Let's see, let's, uh, let's Pokemon Communication the Moth into the deck. Sure. And we're going to go get ourselves... Like I mean, Palkia Gia, I guess we're getting ourselves Keldeo V again. This matchup just getting out of hand very fast. And cool. So we're gonna go energy retrieval. I don't feel like there's anybody worth getting. We're going to accelerate. Oh, that's not the sword shield guard I want. That one is. We're gonna accelerate energy onto our Volcanium Prism Star with Frost Moth. And then, um, yeah, I can't really afford to bench this Magikarp Waylord, but I will just Cynthia. Sure. I have plenty of basic search in the deck, so probably fine just playing that. And, I mean, we could... The thing is, is that uh, that's one of the things that makes Malamar such a strong, strong deck, is that it just only needs to play two of its non-GX attacker, and they keep coming back, right? Like, imagine if I just had, like, a Giratina equivalent and could just, like, keep pumping out a Giratina yeah. every single turn. This matchup would be completely different, but I don't. And, like, can I afford to play four non-GX attackers, three non-GX attackers in this deck? Probably not. Uh, yeah. Frostmoth only does 30 damage. That's not cutting it, you know. We can't go in. Ham, Frostmoth. One, two, three. What other five. water non-GX attackers even are there? There's, like, some... I'm pretty sure there's, like, some baby Keldeo or something that just, like, does a vanilla... Nice. You know, it's not good, gotcha. but like I'm pretty sure there's like something equivalent of that. Okay. But I'm not exactly sure what other. It's a good question. What other water attackers are there? I don't know, Chad. If you have any idea, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. What good water attackers are there? So we're gonna go in. 
Should I go in with the Volk this turn, or should I? I feel like I should go in with potentially the the Caldeo this turn. What if you go to two? Then if you knock out Volk, that's one. Um. Hmm. So if I go in here and I and I knock that out, the twenty there. Then you come up with that and attack. Then I end up having to waste it by just taking that out. And then you take out this probably with like the teeny prism star. Yeah. Or if I go here, then you waste this with that. You take that out with that. And you'll have two prizes remaining. Um, and then uh, I come up with Volcanium prism star. I could potentially knock out what's going to be that with Volcanium prism star. I think either way I lose. So, all right. <laughs> Pretty sure I don't we're think losing. You're as bad on the spot as you seem to think you are. <laughs> I don't think so. Huh? All right, so uh, we are going to. Um, yeah, we're going to stun a blast. Sure. We'll take the knockout. Okay. Um, I'm going to ultra speed. The reason I'm not playing Lapras um, is because I think the Picaram is like one of the best decks in format, and it's just Lightning Week. I think the Caldeo, uh, Caldeo V is also Lightning Week, and Caldeo V only does 40 less damage than Lapras, uh, which is like, you know, not that bad. Now I think that Lapras would have been explicitly better in that matchup that Brady and I played earlier today, which was against the Zacian AD or the Zacian uh, Lucario Melmetal deck. Uh, so we did see that, but otherwise I think Caldeo V is just a more versatile, easier to play Pokemon. And, uh, you know, just like really puts the whole squad on his back. It's a very good card. So I think that playing Caldeo V instead of Lapras opens you up to having more tech space for other stuff. But I think that... Uh, Uh, a kid named Dre is asking, is there any room for a reset stamp? Sure. Uh, I don't really like one reset stamp in a deck that just like mills so many cards, you know, discards so many cards. I think I would rather play two. So um, it's for the same reason that like Reshi's Art doesn't play reset stamp usually. Like you could put reset stamp in the deck. It's just that I think that you're going to be just discarding and, you know, kind of just hamming through your deck so much that uh, I think you'd rather play two. And I'm just not sure that the deck needs to play two. Um, but we will we'll see. Of course, after more testing, I will see if if that ends up mattering. Uh, I think you can cut to a probably a three three or a four three Frostmoth line. But like I said, I think I want like an additional attacker like Volcanium Prism Star in that spot. Uh, also, Jet Geyser just makes it so you don't really need to play Fion because Jet Geyser is always going to be an option for you to kind of like uh, move things from the bench. So I do really like the Volk Prism Star in here for sure. Okay, so you're B stringing. Yep. Accelerate the energy. And then uh, what else do we got going on? Um, let's see. We got a fire crystal. Sure. We got three energy. You need to bench something. Now I'm wondering if you have the Victini Prism Star. Uh, I do have the Blacephalon GX in my hand. Right. Um, but I do not have the Victini to bench. Okay. Um, so that does mean you can just jet geyser. Yeah. I don't knock this out. But you have to, right? Yeah. Um, Alternatively, you can take out the ball, but that's like, seems bad, right? Yeah. I mean, I could also just like knock out one of the GXs. Yeah. Which I'm like kind of into. Sure. Um, let's see. I'm definitely going to put. Ooh, actually. Okay, I am going to venture myself on. I think I'm going to give. Man, getting rid of four energy to take one prize. That, that feels real <laughs> stinky. <laughs> I'm not into that at all. Uh -huh, that does feel uh, pretty bad, I think. Yeah. So. I think I want to bring up Dawn Wings. Sure. Yeah. Dawn Wings. Yep. And then. Uh, okay. okay. So you're taking two prizes there. Yep. Um, cool. So still not in, uh, yeah, I can just check geyser around, but then you could win with the Blacephalon, so I actually just, 
I did just have to knock out the active um, for sure. And then uh, because I can't afford to do that, or else you could gust and win. Um, if you have, there's three custom catchers down. Ah, well, that'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm feeling pretty safe knocking out the active then. Yeah. All right. So if there's three custom catchers in the discard pile. Uh, I feel like I did top deck already. Yeah, I feel like I did. All right. Um, I don't remember this great catcher being in my hand. So, all right, let's. Because uh, like, yeah, that definitely was not in my hand. Because I was thinking to myself like, oh, yeah, no, we're definitely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely knocking out the active, and it's not time to. I could, you know, towering splash feels kind of bad. I mean, like I don't know what's the point of that. Like gust towering splash, like what? There's no point in doing that. Uh, I should towering splash if you bench Victini or something, but like, uh, definitely no point there. So let's just, uh, you know, we want to attack with Volk Prism Star for sure. This hand is pretty good. Otherwise, I don't really want to give you anybody cheap to knock out. So we're just gonna go here. And, you know, the Volcanium Prism Star can knock out anybody on your board. You can't gust. So, like, I definitely don't want to give you a great catcher target if you play that card. So, I think we're just going to Sauna Blast and it does 20 to the Lacephalon. Okay. Um, I'll drop you. It's a pretty okay top deck. <laughs> um, Do you have, like, a theoretical way out of this? I mean... Not if you can switch the volcano next turn. <laughs> I'll have to do. Oh yes, yeah. I mean, if you can power up another attack rate, yeah, you'd it. have to like stand me, I guess. Yeah. So like, I probably should have just like put this energy onto Caldeo just to be safe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you got it. Let me do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you don't stand me out of it. Right. Yeah, I, my stand's gone anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So I've got it. Yeah. All right, that's game. Wow. I was expecting that to be more of a wash, but I guess like, what kind of uh, what kind of happened there? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's as bad of a matchup as you seem to think it is. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess, like, my thought was that I was like, wow, yeah, my two prizes are just going to get, like, you know, just, just smacked every turn. And uh, the thing is, is that uh, I think that the Bolcephalon deck really wants to trade with tag teams, is the yeah. thing. Uh, I mean, you could very easily launch three, like, two attacks per turn to... Uh, to win the game, or two, yeah, you can easily launch two attacks per game to win. Um, but when you maybe need to launch three, like things start, to, I think, to get a little bit, a little bit more dicey. So for sure, that's interesting. You know, and I didn't play any way to, to you know, disrupt your hand or anything. Uh, and then also the Victini Prism Star, and I guess you do play one Quick Ball, right? Right. So you can grab the Victini Prism Star that way. But if the Victini Prism Star ever gets put on the bench, like a towering splash it. Sure. Um, but I mean, then you're not knocking out the active, which is true. generally more important than the Victini on the bench. That's true. That's true. So the Towering Splash ended up not really. I think, like, if you know about it, you could just, like, play around it by not benching every single one of your Blacephalons, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is probably, you know, probably just uh, the smart thing to do anyway. Right. Uh, especially if you know this list and know you're not getting reset stamped. You right. just chill, you know? So. Excellent stuff. Going into game two, what are your uh, what are your thoughts? What are you hoping to get going here in game two? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Just want to water into more fire energy than I did the last time I watered. Uh, turn two <laughs> seems lit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Quest uh, question in the chat. What am I looking for? In my pre-release kit. I'm trying to open the frost moth. Oh yeah. Yeah, what do you uh, what do you want? The uh, Cincino. The Cincino yeah. for sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's good. Now, do you think that uh, Cincino is uh, is a card that's going to be seen as like supplemental draw engine in other decks, like we saw with like Pidgeotto? Is Cincino going to make its way in any decks? And if so, which which decks do you think um, could theoretically use it? I can't think of that off the top of my head that really right. makes good use of it. Yeah, I was like, um, I was even thinking about it here in the Frost Moth deck, like I could play a Cincino and a Ditto um, instead of playing like a Zeb Strika. I'll go second. Okay. Um, so I was thinking about that. Jokes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes indeed. Cool. 
Alright, let's just go. Drop a turn. Check. And, uh. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine, I guess. <laughs> I guess I'll play it. <laughs> um, we're going to start things off with a quick ball with the water energy. And we're just going to get ourselves a snow. going to fast you. All right. Yep. I am going to quick ball. Yeah, I was thinking about you know, supplemental draw in the Frostmoth deck because you can play a Ditto Prism Star, right? So, like, right now I have four Snom and I changed it this match to three Frostmoth. I think that's, like, that's fine. Um, you know, I got four Pokemon Communication in the deck. What would you do, Brady? What, <laughs> how, how many Blounts you prize? Two. <laughs> Ooh, boy! <laughs> and, uh... Oh, Mansan says, do you not get the staff promo? I actually do. Yeah, I actually do get a staff promo because when I'm streaming the event, I'm actually kind of working it. So. Nice. Yeah. That, uh, that is a thing, Mansan. So that is correct. Maybe I'll have to look into you know, whose calls dibs on what staff promo. We're going to go hunting for a Blacephalon. Neato. Okay. Um, I'll... I'm throwing it up here. Uh, all right. <laughs> Live a little. Uh -huh. Sure. Um, all right. We've got the balloon there. Yeah. And that's just going to be a Professor Magnolia for me. Sure. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, baby. Oh, we're chilling. All right. We've got Caldeo V. Nice. And a Pokemon Communication. Trade a Snom back into the deck. Sure. Get ourselves Moth Queen. <laughs> Go off, Moth Queen. <laughs> there she is. Would you just look at her? <laughs> and then, uh, wish Moth Queen had a good attack. <laughs> Moth, Queen, Moth Queen's got a real stinker attack, for sure. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to go. Baby Moth, and then Danny Change, just looking for three energy. Two, three, four, five, six, and we did get there. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to go Viridian yeah. and discard an energy to get another water out of the deck. And we are going to be giving Brady the old egg, but you know, it's fine. Got energy retrieval, two water out of the discard pile. Use uh, ice dance, ice dance, and then retreats. Mm -hmm. And I think cool, we'll just tossing another balloon down, and we're going to take that knockout. Sure, for two prizes. Draw four cards. Sure. All right. Then I'll draw for turn. Sounds good. Okay. We are going to start off with the macro round. Now I see people in the chat calling the, the deck Mothbox, apparently, is what uh, the name that seems to be sticking. Mothbox is fun. I can get behind Mothbox. What do you What do you think, Brady? What's a good name for the water deck? Uh, Mothbox. That's fine. <laughs> I think Mothbox is probably fine. <laughs> um, we'll use Viridian. Sure. Snombox. <laughs> Snom and friends. 
that's not. That's... All right, think of like the worst, most cringy name you could possibly think of. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to get it to stick, guys. This is our chance. We can do this. We can think of the worst possible name for the moth deck and try to get it to catch on. All right, chat. Let me hear it. What's the worst name you could possibly think of? The most cringe inducing name for the moth deck? That's <laughs> uh, Snow Buddies. <laughs> Snow Buddies. Snow Buddies, yeah. All right. I'm calling it Snow Buddies. Anybody opposed <laughs> to calling it Snow Buddies? <laughs> I'll use the fashion. Hmm. It's not looking good for our hero. It's not looking good. <laughs> yeah, busted snow buddies. <laughs> snow buddies. I can't even say it with a straight face, bro. <laughs> Waterworks. <laughs> it's, it's ice, though. Ice, ice, baby. <laughs> Call it your vanilla ice. Oh, my gosh. That's a good one. <laughs> Frost moth <laughs> tips. Oh my gosh. Um, fire crystal. Sure. All right. I will. Fireball circus. All right. Yeah, that does not seem very swell for you there, Brady. Yeah. <laughs> you really hate to see it. Uh -huh. All right, he's gone. Yeah. I will give it to you. My hand is uh, super dead right now, though, so you might That's just. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that counter of the Viridian was actually very clutch. Wow. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Not like this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Not like this. Come on, man. Not like this, bro. Not like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, it's gonna be a pass from me, my guy. All right. Yes. Why did we stall out? Acrobatic. One energy short of game, bro. <laughs> Mothsicle. Ice bugs. Ice buggy. Oh my gosh, yes. Ice buggy. Oh my gosh, that is probably. I think ice buggy is even worse than ice snow buggy. buddies. That's, uh, <laughs> that's wrong. <laughs> ice buggy is definitely worse than. Uh, somehow worse than snow buddies. <laughs> Man. And he got the Blacephalon out on his bench. Oh, geez. Um, let's see. I'm going to greens. Sure. You got people in the chat singing the Frozen theme song. <laughs> That's epic. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are you trying to figure out here, Brady? How many fire crystals are prized? Yeah. Let let us in. It's looking like. Two. Two? All right. Yes. How many have you used? Two. Ah, so you're telling me there are none left. Uh, correct. Ah. <laughs> Looking like it might need to be Victini Prism start time. Uh huh. That'd be cool, I guess. <laughs> um, interesting. I really was hoping to be string, but I have to get all the energy out of my deck to take a knockout here. <laughs> On the. No, 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 I'm custom catching something. What? <laughs> Who you custom catching? The probably the, 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 the balloons. I like to take one more card. That's probably fair. Yeah. Or I could just take this out and save that for later. It also seems okay. It does you know I don't play? I got a two out of three chance of hitting a fire crystal here. That's pretty good. Two out of three, two, right? That's a pretty good odds. Yeah. All right, we're yeah, yeah we'll just knock out both frost. Or oh, I could bring that guy out. So then you can't accelerate energy unless you find another frost moth. That's also pretty good. It is? Huh.
And I got a question in the chat. Uh, what's the support line for Frostmoth deck? And it's four research and four Cynthia. So just the best draw supporters in the game right now. Have the greens. Have all the supporters in my hand. I don't really know what else I need other than. I'm just gonna take a stamp preemptively. Get you. Sure. You know, off this turn. Sure. Uh, and I'll play the beast ring. Yep. All right. So I think we might just be in kind of like a, a potential checkmate scenario here. Not exactly sure. Brady needs fire crystals to win the game. No, he's got plenty of fire energy in the discard pile. There's a big Blacephalon prize as well. So, Ray's last three prizes are on Okay, we'll see. Nice. <laughs> should, should get a good one there, Brady. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I've got three energy, and we can jet geyser. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have game, my man? Actually, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, in fact, I don't think so. Also, I miscounted my stuff once. They were actually, I actually have prize one. <laughs> <laughs> man, you dramatic, cool. bro. <laughs> uh, I forgot to ultra space for my man, for my guy. It's all good. Who's your guy? Uh, man, I got an ultra beast in my deck. The, the man, Russian man. Russian man? Yeah, the rush the rush in man. Yes. Oh, oh. Invasion man. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dawn Wings, Necrozma. Uh, oh, right, right. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I am going to Rosa. Sure. I'll get Victini. Yep. And Victini and <laughs> Victini and I'm gonna need a top deck like right meow. This is uh, I want to peek. You guys ever just playing casual games and just you just peek Take a little, you take a little peek. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, because we uh, you know, just because it's a friendly, and you just want to see the anticipation's killing you. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to wait. You just uh -huh. want to take a little peek, and you just tell your opponent like. Hey, Brady, it's cool if I just take a peek. <laughs> <laughs> you know who the most egregious peeker is? Who is it, Brady? You already it's know. It's Otto. It's Otto. Man, Otto loves to take a peek. <laughs> Otto, I cannot play a casual game with Otto without him peeking at his top deck every single turn. Every yeah. single turn. It's not just like, oh, this is like a crucial thing. I want to see if it's worth scooping or not. Right. Like, no, every single That's turn, while you're playing your turn, Otto will, will peek every single game during testing. Um. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna bleed. Okay. For ten? Yep. Now, did you green? You rose it? Yeah. So you're just like building up to have like theoretical gain. Uh huh. Next turn. Okay. Well, we got ourselves Pokemon communication. So I'm gonna go get a Dedenne. I'm also gonna Ultra Space for the Dawnwing because I'm not bad now. So nice. <laughs> we're gonna get those things. Um, I guess, I guess, I guess. What are we going for here? So, your GX is down. Correct. Your only way to win is to gust. What did you Rosa for? The Victini and an egg. And an egg. Yeah. And so you have not placed the egg yet. No, I got a big old hand. There's nothing in there worth getting, so I just grabbed the egg. <laughs> How many custom catchers in your discard pile? Uh, I don't know. I already have two in my hand, then. Oh. So you just need the energy. Correct. And you didn't B-string. Okay. So do you, you must already have a welder in your hand, too, then. Do you have a welder? Dang, bro. You hate to see it. <laughs> um, okay. Well, let's see. Hmm. Okay, let's go um, Jet Geyser. Sure. Okay. And then, it's fine. We're going to go Magic or Waylord and Data Change. Draw six cards. Sure. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
Hmm. Okay, you've got two prizes remaining. Um. I think if we go super scoop up, we could bring up the Volcanion and just knock out your other guys and hope that you just don't have game next turn. I mean, it's like really all I've got. Um, knocking out the active isn't good. So, um, we've got four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, let's uh, see if we hit the super scoop up. Oh, super scoop up. Heads. All right, we're going to bring the Volcanion Prism Star back. Sure. And then we've got three energy under the Waylord, five energy under the Waylord, energy retrieval, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, energy retrieval again. Yeah. Okay. And then eight. And then we are going to retreat and Towering Splash GX to knock out your two bench. Yep. 20 of the active and see if you got it. All right. Yep. Huh. Oh, yeah, that should be 20. 20, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I can't get it. You can't get it? No. Not enough energy in the deck, or yeah, dang man. So you just needed the other fire crystal and it was out. Dang. So like, did you need that active to not or that one with the two to not get knocked out, or? Uh, if you'd have done anything other than towering splash on that turn, I, that would have won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, literally anything except for the towering splash. Yeah. Dang. So like, if you keep the Victini, you have an out to win. Yes. Um, because you could just like you have so many fire in your discard pile, you can win that way. If, uh, wow, I mean, you just knock just, out that active. Yeah. I win if you just knock out the one that I that you promoted. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, Towering Splash GX really, uh, wow, really getting in there. Yeah. So, that's, uh, yeah, that matchup wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Sure enough, uh, you know, just uh, kind of consistent, quick attacking is like, you know, can be problematic when you don't have three prize targets, I think. Right. Um, every single, uh, Every single game. So, all right, Brady, what do you, uh, would you be opposed to like, uh, to Uno Moss, man? Sure, I'm down. Let's go, Brady. <laughs> all right, guys, we've got, uh, we've got an Uno Moss scenario. So, uh, what are we, what are we feeling, chats? If, oh, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank <laughs> you for watching the video. Make sure to check out fullgripgames.com and also big shout outs to Captain Redbeard with the Twitch Prime sub. Make sure to check out FullGripGames.com where we will have Sword and Shield pre-orders up by the time this is on YouTube. They will be up. And also make sure to check out FullGripCodes.com for Sword and Shield codes pre-ordered. Uh, pre-orders are available and they'll be delivered to you via email.